Hey everyone, today I want to give you a very quick update on the Canon R5, so let's get straight into it. Canon has just announced a bunch of new and awesome kit, most exciting for me being the C300 Mark III, which we looked at last week and just released our first look, so go and check that out via the link here. Canon also released a few updated specs for the R5, and it looks like it could turn out to be a bit of a beast. Straight off the bat, Canon are not only aiming this camera at photographers, but also want it to be used on video and motion picture productions, and you can tell this just from the specs. You'll be able to record 8K RAW uncropped at up to 29.97 frames per second internally. That is insane for a mirrorless camera, and a first for Canon. I'm really intrigued how Canon has done this, and what flavour of RAW the camera will use, and how the camera manages the heat that is going to be generated. As well as the ability to shoot RAW, you also have the ability to shoot 8K internally in 422 10-bit in Canon Log up to 29.97 frames per second or 422 10-bit HDR PQ both in H.265. You'll also be able to shoot uncropped 4K internally up to 119.88 frames per second in 422 10-bit in Canon Log H.265 or 422 10-bit HDR PQ H.265. You can also output 422 10-bit in Canon Log or 422 10-bit HDRPQ output via HDMI at 4K up to 59.94 frames per second. So this could pair quite nicely with a Ninja 5 and I'm intrigued to see if you can record internally while also outputting and recording externally. I'm also really interested to see what flavour of Canon Log this camera will be, be, will be using, whether it will be limited to just regular Canon Log like the 1DX Mark III whether it has the ability and capability to capture more dynamic range and use C-Log2 or C-Log3. Dynamic range was one area the 1DX Mark III lacks a little bit. C-Log is stated to give you up to 12 stops of dynamic range, C-Log2 offers up to 15 and C-Log3 offers up to 14. From how Canon have worded their press release, it seems to be C-Log. If this is the case, I am intrigued to see how this performs, and even if the dynamic range is limited, as long as you understand the limitation of what the camera can do, you can still make 12 stops look great. All of these awesome shooting formats and modes also allow you to use Canon's amazing dual pixel autofocus no matter what mode or frame rate you are shooting in. This is huge news, as it was something that people complained about with some of their previous cameras. It will also feature 5-axis IBIS, which enables lens IS and camera IBIS to be combined. From Canon's wording, it seems to be that the stabilisation here won't be like the 1DX Mark III's electronic, but a newly developed in-camera optical image stabilisation. The R5 will also feature dual card slots, one of which is a CF Express and the other being an SD UHS-2 slot. With the four formats mentioned earlier, it makes sense that you will have to use CF Express because of how large these data rates are going to be. I can see this being a pretty handy little B or C camera for people who own existing cinema EOS systems like the C200 or C500 Mark II, just like the 1DX Mark III is, but with some, some extra features that the 1DX Mark III doesn't have. But we will see how it can match to the cinema EOS line once Canon release some footage. So that's everything new that Canon has told us, and it looks like the R5 could be a really compelling option for a lot of people, and we can't wait to see how the camera performs once it's released. We'll be releasing the R5 as soon as we can, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to let us know your thoughts or talk to other people in the community, head on over to our Discord via the link in our bio. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.